order to get started on this crochet cardigan tutorial, I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the materials that I will be using in order to make this. First and foremost, I will be double stranding my yarn. I'm gonna be using a fingering weighted yarn and also a lace weight mohair. This fingering weight yarn is also labeled as a number one or a sock yarn. This colorway is also available on my website if you guys would like to purchase the exact items that I'm using and recreate it for yourself. Along with that, like I said, I will be double stranding with this mohair. Now, this mohair is also labeled as a number zero lace weight fiber. It's very, very thin, but as you can see, there is a little bit of fluff to it. So it's gonna add just a little bit more bulk and density to our project. Along with those yarns, I will also be using a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. Next up, I will also be using four stitch markers in order to create the increases effortlessly. So make sure you guys pick out four stitch markers. And of course, last but not least, we will be using some scissors to help cut our yarn, just a little bit of a measuring tape to help us get the right measurements. And of course, some darning needles to help weave in our ends towards the very end of our project. So let's go ahead and get started on this cardigan. To begin, I'm going to be grabbing my fingering weights along with my lace weight mohair. Again, we're gonna double strand these and I'm just gonna start off with a basic slip knot. I'm gonna take my 5.0, insert it into the slip knot, and now we can go ahead and begin on the starting chain. So what I'm gonna do for the starting chain is just yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through. And I'm gonna add as many chains as I feel necessary to wrap very comfortably around my upper shoulder section. The great thing about this pattern is that the amount of chains does not matter. It's completely up to you whether you wanna do an even number or an odd number, just as long as this chain can comfortably rest around your upper shoulder section. For my body size in this tutorial, I'm gonna go with a chain of 70. So this is what my starting chain should be looking like. And now that I have my chain of 70 created, what I wanna do in order to place my increases correctly is I'm going to fold my starting chain in half and I want the two ends of our chain to meet up at the very center. So just do your best. A lot of this is just kind of eye work or guessing work. I don't use a ton of math in my tutorials. I honestly just kind of eyeball it and go from there. And before I can go ahead and start crocheting row one of this cardigan, I do need to place my stitch markers because row one involves the increases. So my method here is that I'm gonna be using the rule of quarters. I'm just going to be dividing my chain into quarter sections and placing stitch markers at the first quarter on this edge and also at the later quarter down here. I'm just gonna be placing my first stitch marker at about the two inch mark on the front section of our chain and on the back section. If you guys would like, feel free to count stitches from the starting corner here and just make sure that they're matching up. So starting from this corner right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches and place a marker right through that chain. So keep that number eight in mind. Again, it kind of depends what your measurements are, but again, starting from this corner one more time, I'm gonna count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight stitches, and go ahead and place your second stitch marker through that corresponding chain. So now at this point, I do have my two matching stitch markers about eight stitches away from one corner. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Find this corner, count out eight stitches and place a stitch marker and count out another eight on the back side and place my fourth stitch marker. Now that we have our stitch markers in place, it's time to go ahead and start working on row one of this cardigan. So picking back up where we last left off after our 70th chain, of course, I will be chaining an extra two at the end of every single row just to help me turn corners because I will be working with double crochet. So after my 70th, I can go ahead and chain one and two. And again, I'll be working with double crochets. So for the very first row, I'm gonna skip the first two chains, yarn over and insert my hook into the third chain available. I'm just going to insert and place my very first double crochet. So there is the first one. For the rest of row one, I will be working with one double crochet up until the point that I reach every single stitch marker. So here is my second. Again, I'm just gonna yarn over, find the next chain available, and insert my hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. With three on, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So here are my cute little double crochets for row one. 
I'm just going to repeat this until I reach my first stitch marker. Now that I've worked a few double crochets in a row, as you can see, I'm coming up to the very first stitch marker. So what I want to do into every single stitch marker place, I'm gonna be placing a double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all into the exact same stitch. So I'm gonna leave my little stitch marker in there for now. I'm gonna yarn over, insert into that chain, and place my first double crochet. From here, I'm going to chain one, yarn over and insert my hook right back into that chain space and this is going to be my increase stitch so this is what it looks like and at this point if you would like you can remove your stitch marker and place it right into that chain one space so that you can keep track of your increases on every single row so now at this point my stitch marker is sitting at the chain one place in between the two double crochets and this is what every single increase is going to look like moving on i can pick up the very next chain space and continue on with our one double crochet into each stitch pattern Again, just moving on to the next chain, one double crochet across the entire row until I reach the next stitch marker. I'm coming up to my very next stitch marker. So again, I'm just gonna leave it in there. I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook right into that stitch and place my first double crochet. Chain one, yarn over and go right back into that same chain space to finish my increase. So this is what it's looking like again. As you can see, there's a little tiny gap in between the stitches, and that is just gonna help signify that that is an increase area. So again, I'm just gonna remove my little stitch marker and place it into the chain one space so that I don't forget where to increase on the following row. And again, for the rest of row one, continue on with that one double crochet into each chain space until you reach your stitch markers. I'm coming up here to the very end of row one. I'm gonna pick up that very last chain, place my double crochets, and at this point I can go ahead and set everything down just to show you. But again, I have my one, two, three, and four increase spots, and this is what row one is looking like. So let's go ahead and move on to row two and so on. After I show you guys row two, the rest of this pattern is really just a repeat of this row over and over. So what I'm gonna do to start working on row two is chain two, and this is gonna apply for every single row. The chain two does not count as a stitch. So at this point, we're gonna follow the same exact pattern that we have for row one. I'm gonna be placing one double crochet into the top of every single stitch until I reach my stitch markers. So there is my first double crochet in the row. Yarn over, look for the next stitch, picking up both two top loops and placing a double crochet. Again, yarn over, finding the very next stitch and just working one double crochet across the entire row. I'm starting to approach the little increase section right here. As you can see, this is my little chain one section. Right here though, at this double crochet, I am going to continue and place one double crochet right into the very top of that stitch. And now at this point where I have reached the chain one section, this is where I will be placing my future increases. So I'm going to yarn over, insert right into that open gap just beneath the chain one section and place my increase. So here's my double crochet, chain one, insert again back into that gap and place my second double crochet. So here is my increase on top of the row prior. After we finish that increase, I can move on to the following double crochet and just continue on with one double crochet across the entire row. I've reached the very end of row two and I have one more double crochet left. So make sure that you're picking up both two top loops. And this is the end of row two. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it down just so that you guys can get an idea of how this cardigan is taking shape. 
So with my piece lying flat on top of itself, this is the very beginning of the cardigan. As you can see with those little increases at the four points, it is slowly going to taper out and over time it will get larger and larger. So this is exactly what we're looking for. The shape of this is great. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to row three. I'm gonna show it to you guys one more time, nice and up close. Rows two, three, and the rest of the yoke of this sweater is all going to be a repeat of row one or row two over and over. So picking up where I've last left off here at the end of row two, I'm going to chain two at the very start of my row and turn my work. And again, that chain two does not count as a stitch. I'm going to yarn over and look for that very first stitch in the row and place one double crochet. Moving on to the very next stitch, yarn over, pick up both two top loops and work a double crochet and continue on with one double crochet for the entire row until we hit our stitch markers. I'm approaching my very first stitch marker. As you can see, I still have one more double crochet, so I'm going to work into that double crochet like normal. And now here at the chain one section at our increase, I'm going to place one double crochet right into that big open gap. So there's the first double crochet chain one, yarn over and insert right back into that open chain one space to finish out our increase area. So there, as you can see, we've got three increase rows stacked on top of each other, finding the next double crochet available and working directly into that and repeating the one double crochet into every single stitch until we reach our next stitch marker. And now at this point, I can just continue to add on as many rows as I see fit until I can get those four corners to reach just below my underarm section. For my body size and my own personal measurements, I have decided to stop at a total of 13 rows from the very first row that I've shown you all the way here to the very last row. So again, this is 13 rows from my own body size. From here, you're gonna wanna pinch from corner to corner underneath your arm and see roughly how many inches you need to connect the two panels together. What I'm gonna do now after my 13th row is cut off my yarn here and tie off a knot. And I'm gonna use that exact same yarn to connect connect it to where we have our increase sections at that chain one section. And I'm going to create a chain that is completely up to you from one corner to the other. I'm just going to start here at one of the underarm sections where I have my two stitch markers. I'm gonna bring in that yarn again, insert my hook directly into that chain one space or that chain one gap, connect my yarn and pull it through and tie off a knot. I'm just going to insert my hook, pull up a loop, and as I mentioned earlier, you can create a chain as long or as short as you guys would like. I'm gonna aim for about a two inch long chain. Now that I have a chain that is about nine stitches long, I'm just going to lift up the top part of the cardigan. I'm gonna find the corresponding increase section where my stitch marker is, insert my hook directly into that chain one space, and I'm just going to slip stitch the chain to the other corner. So at this point, my two corners or underarms are now connected. I'm just gonna go ahead, cut off my yarn and tie off a quick knot here so that I can move on to the other underarm section. But this is now our cardigan. As you can see, we have attached underneath the arm. So if you guys would like, you can continue to work on the sleeve section independently. But at this point, I'm just gonna move on to working the body section. Now at this point, this is what your cardigan should be looking like. Again, we still have the basis of the increases, but now that we have that chain underneath our arm sections, we can continue to work on just the torso or body section. So if I open up the cardigan, what I'm going to do is pick up where I have left off after that end of the 13th row, and I'm just gonna continue on with one double crochet into every single stitch, across the body section. When we approach our chain areas, I will of course follow one double crochet into each chain section and then move across the back of the cardigan, repeat one double crochet across this other chain section and then finish off onto the front panel. 
And for the remainder of row 14, again, I'm just gonna be placing one double crochet into the top of every single stitch. So up until we reach just below our bust section, I will not be adding any increases. We're simply working one double crochet across. Now that I've worked across one of the front panels and I am reaching the first chain section, what I want to do is place one extra double crochet directly into that increase section right here. It would just be right where that chain one section is, where we were adding the increases before. I just find that by placing an extra stitch directly into that increase area, it's going to eliminate just a little bit of a gap or a space between the chains and the body section. So now that I've worked directly into that open chain space, I can go ahead and place one double crochet into each available chain that I have. So again, for my body measurements, this is going to be nine chains across. I'm working into the very last chain space that I have, and now we are ready to start crocheting across the back panel. But just as I did before, I'm gonna go ahead, yarn over, and place one more double crochet directly into that open chain space where we were working the increases before. So at this point, I can go ahead and carry on with the one double crochet across the entire row. Very, very simple and basic. We're pretty much just adding more length to our cardigan. And now that I have officially worked or completed one full row in the round with everything connected, I'm gonna take a few moments and just add on a few more rows because I would like my cardigan to hit just underneath my chest area before I go in and add a few rows with a ruffle or a wavy hem. I've spent a little bit more time crocheting to add length to the bottom part of this cardigan. So where we last left off underneath the arms, I have an extra seven rows. So in total, I have 20 rows from the very top all the way to the bottom of my cardigan. And at this point, I would like to start incorporating that slight wave or ruffle effect. I'll be adding an increase into every 11th stitch. Now, if you guys would like a more ruffled effect, you could choose or opt to do every seven stitches. But for me, I just want a slight wave increase. So into every 11th stitch, I will add two double crochet. So picking up here for the row one of the ruffles, again, I'm going to yarn over, find that very first stitch in the row. And this is going to be my first double crochet. Again, yarn over, finding the next stitch. This is my second, my third, four double crochets. And now here for my 11th double crochet in the row, I'm going to insert and place one double crochet and once more yarn over and go right back into that same 11th stitch. So we officially have two double crochet placed into the same stitch and that is going to be my increase. And again, I'm gonna be doing this for every 11 stitches on this very first row. So the count is going to start all over again. We have one, two in a row, three, four, 10 double crochet in a row. And once more here at my 11th stitch, I can place two double crochet all going into the same exact stitch. So that is how my increases are going to work for this very first row of the ruffles. I'll meet you guys at the very end. I'm starting to come up here to the very end of row one for the ruffles, and I've just placed my very last increase for the row. As you can see, I'm not doing this in multiples of 11. So what I'm gonna do is work my very last increased like normal. There's my first double crochet, and here is my second double crochet. And what I'm gonna do just to keep track of this very last increase is I'm going to place one of my stitch markers through 
that second stitch where my increase is just to help keep a reminder of where that increase is because we do want the increases to be placed into the same exact spots on every single row. So now that I have that little stitch marker on there, I can go ahead and finish out row one like normal. Again, it doesn't really matter how many stitches that you have left, just as long as you mark where that very last increase is for that first row. Here I am at the very end of row one for the ruffles. I can go ahead, chain two, and turn my work. In order to build upon the ruffles, I need to add on one extra stitch count for every single row. So for the first row, I increased into every 11 stitches. For this second row, I'm gonna increase into every 12 stitches. So essentially, we want to place our increases wherever we have an increase from the row prior. Likewise, for the next row, I will place an increase into every 13th stitch, and the following row will be an increase into every 14th stitch, and so on. So let's go ahead and work on row two of the ruffle section. I'm gonna place one double crochet into each stitch until I reach my first increase section. So now that I've come up to my first increase stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and place my two double crochet all into the same exact stitch. So there is one double crochet, and here is my second double crochet. I can go ahead and remove my stitch marker and just place this to the side for now because we won't need it for the rest of the row. And now that I have my very first increase placed, I can start placing my increase stitches into every 12 stitches. And now here again for my 12th stitch in the row, if you look closely, you can see that this increase will fall directly on top of the increases from the row prior. So we always wanna make sure that we are placing the increases and stacking them one on top of each other. And once again, now that you've placed that increased stitch, the count is gonna start all over again from one to 12 stitches. All right, so I've decided to work up just a few more rows, adding increases at every increase point. And so far, I really do like the length of this on my body. I have tried it on, and I feel like this is a really good stopping point. The very bottom of this cardigan is hitting just about my belly button area. So I have done a total of seven rows with those increases, picking up from where I last left off and what I showed you guys. So again, that is seven rows only, just for me with these increases. As you can see, there is a really nice, subtle, flow to it. Now moving on to the very last and final step of this cardigan, keep in mind this is completely optional. If you guys would like, you can tie off a knot and she's totally wearable as is right now. But I wanted to give this piece a little bit more of like a finalized look. So what I'm gonna do right here on the inner portion or inner seams, I'm just gonna go ahead and reattach my yarn and add just a few rows of some of a ribbing, if you will, just to make her look a little bit more complete. I'm gonna choose to use some like leftover buttons that I found in my collection. Again, completely optional. You don't even have to add buttons if you would like. You can just go in and add that little bit of like a edging to the cardigan. So what I want to do is I only want to add the slight bit of ribbing to the section where I have no increases. So that means for the last seven or so rows that I have, I'm just gonna choose to not add that ribbing there. So I'm really just gonna have a little rectangle that peeks out on the left-hand side and also on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and start adding the border to the top part of the cardigan. So again, I have my yarn attached at the very last row where I don't have any increases. So my yarn is attached and she is ready to go. I think I wanna aim for about five rows of single crochets here along the inner edge of our cardigan. So picking up right here for row one of the border, I'm going to chain one and going right back into the same spot, I'm gonna pick up any spot that I can find and wiggle my hook through and place a single crochet. I'm gonna move on to the next available open gap, just pick it up and place a single crochet. And I'm just gonna do this all the way up to the very top or row one of the cardigan. So again, I'm just gonna look here, finding this next open gap, place a single crochet. And again, right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up part of that stitch, wiggle through, and place my single crochet. I've just reached the end of row one for our border, so I'm going to chain one and turn my work and continue to work backwards on the border section. So again, I'm just gonna add row two here in the same exact fashion. I'm just going to chain one at the start of my row, pick up every single single crochet that we have, and just place one single crochet 
across the entire row. I'm coming up here to the end of row two and I have one more single crochet left. So I can go ahead and work that stitch. So now this is what your piece should look like. As I mentioned earlier, it's gonna be just a very tiny little rectangle that kind of pops off of the cardigan. So now for row three, I do need to make sure that I'm leaving space for some buttonholes. So what I'm gonna do after I have my chain one and turn my work, I need to make sure that I'm marking off specific points where I'm going to create a chain in order to make the little buttonhole gap. So I'm just gonna use my stitch markers again, pick up any spot that I feel like I would really like a button to be placed and use my stitch marker to go through those stitches. So looking here at the very top of the cardigan, if I wanna wear it nice and tight, I think I will place one right here about an inch and a half down from the very top of the cardigan. So that is going to be one buttonhole space. I'm gonna pick up the next stitch marker, try to space these out as evenly as possible. But just find another little point and pick up that stitch. And these little stitch markers are just going to serve as a reminder of where we need to be placing our little holes to create spaces for the buttons. So two more, I'm just gonna find another good spot for this, pick it up. So let's go ahead and move on to row three with our buttonholes. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with those single crochets, one into every single stitch until we reach our stitch markers. So for me, I have about five stitches in a row of just regular plain single crochets. And now here at the stitch with the stitch marker, what I'm gonna do is just chain one and skip one, so we're skipping that stitch with the stitch marker, and I'm just gonna continue on with single crochets. So moving on to the next available stitch, I can just work a regular single crochet. So just by creating that one little chain one gap, we are leaving enough room for our buttons to squeeze through. But again, keep in mind, if you guys are using a wider or a larger button, you may need to chain two or even chain three. Just make sure that you do a little test run, make sure that your button can very easily fit through. And as you can see, mine most definitely does. So I'm gonna set that to the side and continue on with row three. Again, I'm just working single crochets across the entire row. And when I reach my stitch marker, I will chain one and skip one. I'm coming up to my next stitch marker. So again, what I wanna do is just chain one, skip one. So we're skipping that stitch. Find the next available single crochet and continue on with our pattern. I've reached the end of row three and I have my little chain one spots all placed nice and evenly. So now what I'm gonna do is go back to repeating rows one and two for a total of two more times. I just wanna add a total of five rows of a border to our cardigan. So now we're just going to ignore our little chain one places and just pick up with row four. So again, I'm just gonna place one single crochet across the entire row. And when I come up on a spot where I have the chain one space, I'm just going to insert my hook directly into the open gap underneath that chain one and place a single crochet right on top of it. So as you can see, hopefully, there is still a cute little small hole right there. And then just carry on with your single crochets. But again, whenever you come up to a chain one space, just work directly into that gap and place the single crochet. Again, here is another little chain one space. I'm just gonna insert my hook into the big open gap right there and place a regular single crochet. For row five, I'm just gonna repeat the same steps from row four and continue on with single crochets across the entire row. At this point, this is what my little border collar line looks like. Again, I do have those tiny little chain one spots throughout, but this is essentially what it should look like. Just a little rectangle, enough of a flap that I can overlap it and close it off. So at this point, now that I've shown you how to do one side, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to creating the border on the other side. But again, follow those same exact steps. Make sure that you're counting the exact amount of stitches that you have on one border edge and mimic that onto the other side of the panel. Just keep in mind that we are not adding chain one sections because we already have our buttonholes right here. We are simply going to be working five regular rows of single crochet on this edge without 
those chain one spots. And at the very end, I'm just gonna go ahead and hand sew my little buttons into place wherever I have a corresponding chain one spot. All right, so at this point, I have officially finished up my left side border collar, if you will. And also, I just finished up my right hand side. So as you can see with these little rectangles, I can overlap them just an inch worth. So I'm just gonna use my leftover mohair to help sew on these buttons last minute. And then after that, all you have to do is weave in the little bit of ends that you have throughout your project just to help hide those and that way it's not going to unravel on you and at that point your cardigan is complete.